I've got two boys, and when they got big enough to start walking around and, and going places with me, I decided I wanted, wanted to get into collecting. And uh, so I chose Case because I wanted to be able to have a lot of the oddball stuff. Also, growing up on the farm, my favorite tractor was a 300 Case out of all the tractors we had. And to be able to, to uh, own the only known prototypes of the 300 and it being my favorite tractor growing up is a pretty, pretty neat you know, thing to do. So I was probably about uh, 10 or 12, you know, when, when my dad started uh, collecting antique tractors. So uh, I basically, you know, grew up with it. I'm second generation. And uh, so being second generation, you know, you tend to look for the more odd tractors or more rare tractors. And I've always had an interest in experimental tractors of all brands. And so uh, it seemed like I started buying and they just kept coming. I've actually got 10 case experimental tractors now and I've got one uh, international. Uh, experimental tractors so and most of them are in need of a lot of repair uh, the, the uh, experimental tractors weren't thought very highly of and uh, a lot of people just they got used up and, and tossed away and uh, several that I've got actually came out of scrap yards this is a an early 300 prototype okay what case did uh, they saw the need for a improved tractor with more horsepower over the VAC so they basically took the VAC 14 and heavily modified it and built these tractors here. And uh, from what I've been told, the, they built 12 prototypes and every prototype was different and they were trying new ideas. And this particular tractor here, every part on it that's not from the VAC line, it's got an experimental casting number or is hand built. And uh, you can See, you can see the difference if, if you line a VAC and, a, and this prototype and in a production 300 up, you can see the changes and you can see the direction they were heading. So it's really neat, you know, to have a tractor that, you know, they put out in the field and tested and, you know, tried to make improvements or the things they didn't like on the tractor and they changed them for the production model. This tractor has the shoe type brakes on the back like the VAC, but they're wider and the production model has disc brakes, so they went to a completely different design. Uh, this tractor still has the VAC engine block, but it's been modified. I believe this tractor is 142 cubic inch. The VAC was 124. Uh, they ended up going with 148 cubic inches on the production model. So it's, you know, they, they decided they wanted a little bit more horsepower than this particular tractor had. So, uh, it, like I said, there's a lot of parts been modified. The uh, wishbone for the front end has been boxed and welded in. Uh, they went with a different type of steering than they had on the VAC, uh, and this tractor's got this. So, just about every casting except the engine block on this tractor is experimental, and then the engine block is modified. They put the hand clutch on here, so what that did was that allowed you, if you were running a hay bale or a combine and you got into a heavy area, you could pull that back and it would stop the transmission gears, you know, it stop you from going forward and it would let the PTO run. And also, this tractor has a dual range transmission. They ended up going with a triple range, but that, that gave you, this tractor has eight forward gears and two reverses, where the VAC just had one reverse and four forwards. Well, this is the Eagle Hitch, and uh, here's an EXV casting for the PTO assembly. These arms were new for the 300 model. These arms were hand formed. You can see the dents in them right there and the welds are a lot more crude than the production welds. Uh, these pieces here have an EXV casting and experimental casting on it. So they, Case already had the Eagle hitch, but this was an improved design. Case come out with this hitch right here for the 300 series, and later on it carried on into the later models. And this was just a, a hitch that, if you had a heavy tongued implement, you could let this down to the ground and put your pin in without having to lift the implement up. They also show using it to pull post hose, pull, Pull post with, uh, so just just a handy thing to have on the back, you know, to uh, make your work easier on the farm. There were 12 built, and there's only two known to exist, and I've managed to collect both of those. And I have the other tractor at home, and it's serial number 55-12. It has several production pieces on it, and it, the design of that tractor is, is a lot closer than the design of the production tractor. Uh, it also has the shoe type brakes, but they're larger than this. So they started out with the VAC shoe brakes, they went a little bigger on this tractor, and then on the last prototype they went even bigger, and they didn't like that, so they went to the disc uh, brake design for the production model. Now the other tractor has a 300 uh, block 
casting the same casting number as the production tractor. Uh, one odd thing about the late prototype that I have, there's no provisions for checking the oil in the rear end or the uh, torque tube for your hydraulic oil. So to do it right, you have to pull the covers off to check them. Now, it, the casting numbers for the main gear shift cover and the casting number for the triple range cover, they have the correct production casting numbers on them, but they just haven't been drilled and tapped for the uh, check plugs or the fill holes. Well, they give you a window to the past and you know what the manufacturers were doing uh, you know, to make a better tractor for the farmers to use. Uh, you know, there's probably been an experimental tractor for just about every new model of tractor that ever came out. And, uh, you know, the only way they could get to the next model was by experimenting. And these, you know, these were the tractors that were necessary for that. Uh, the case tractors that were experimental at Rock Island, they were sent, they had a special department uh, that, that the engineering worked on these tractors and built them. So this tractor here, was never on an assembly line. It was hand assembled in the, the engineering shop at the Rock Island plant. They would also had their best people in that plant, you know, working on the experimental tractors. Their best craftsmen, you know, would, would be the guys doing this work, you know, because it's it's not uh, run of the mill work. You know, you're you're putting something together that you know from ideas that they come up with. 